All right, welcome back. Good to see everyone. So we're going to jump into some of our expressions, if you will, around maximizing joy and what that might mean in your life and actually how that relates to an awakening process, perhaps, which it definitely does. And so, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed. So, yeah, let's, go, ahead let's go right into it. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. The, uh, first of all, though, yes, however, yes. I just really want to open it up to thank everyone so much for being here, and especially Rick and Kathleen and Art and all of the team who makes these events happen for all of you. What a great blessing that is. So thank you to everyone, especially our dear friend Rick. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, um, just just so you know, uh, we feel very honored uh, to be able to be here with you, and uh, we greatly appreciate the dedication and the communion mm -hmm. that it takes for several hundred people to be gathering once a week for years and years and years on that. Uh, bravo, bravo. Good for you and good for all of us. And good for the world. For what you radiate to everyone everywhere just yes. by showing up yes. Giving your and, doing, and doing the work. So the, um, yeah, the title uh, of our the theme of our talk part here, and, and hopefully the Q&A, is Maximize Your Joy. And uh, the subtitle, How What We Call Green Lighting Can Widen and Deepen Your Green Zone. And of course, green zone is a, a phrase that I gather is used in various contexts, but Rick has a particular meaning of it. Uh, which, as I understand, is a, a very positive baseline state that we can cultivate that consists of a strong sense of safety, deep satisfaction or contentment, and connection, connectedness, mm -hmm. and, and the care that goes with that. So, Maximizing joy has become a, a, a prominent theme for us in our work, uh, especially these days as more and more people are finding themselves struggling uh, with despair and depression and uh, in many cases uh, joylessness, hopelessness, um, rates of suicide are through the roof, etc. And so from our perspective, uh, it's totally okay, we have a talk on this subject, totally okay to maximize both the temporary experiential joys that we appreciate in our lives, and of course to cultivate and enjoy uh, a more existential quality of joy. We could call it the unshakable kind, and that's what we have help people over the years, many, many people uh, fall into uh, or, or awaken into as a kind of, again, whole being realization. Rick mentioned to us that a theme of his lately uh, in his talks is wise effort. And that makes a lot of sense to us. Uh, and it's a good way to frame uh, what we're looking into here. Um, uh, years ago, almost a decade now, uh, the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu had, uh, I guess, the one great meeting of their lifetimes. Desmond Tutu is no longer with us. And out of that came what they called the Book of Joy. And there's a section called Obstacles to Joy and what to do about that. And in that section, um, these two giants of spirituality and religion uh, took somewhat opposing views in their loving, in their loving way, disagreed a little bit. The Dalai Lama, a fierce advocate, but very reasoned, of course, for what he called cultivating mental immunity. Uh, the Archbishop, his response to that was, yes, that's 
wonderful, beautifully said, but sometimes you just got to give yourself a break. You know, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, you know, you can do everything, take all your vitamins all the time, but every now and again you'll be sick. Don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, what came out of that, though, is really a recognition that there's room for both of these orientations. And in our work, uh, that's something that's quite prominent. So I think without going into a whole lot more detail, I'll just say that, because uh, I want to turn it over to Linda again, um, what we mean by green lighting came out of a particular time early, early in my work, 1993, 94. Uh, there was a kind of a workshop I did with people, uh, individuals typically. Uh, and at a certain point, I would talk with them about self-acceptance, a deep self-acceptance. And something odd happened because it, it, it seemed like with most people that I did that, when I got to that, and I thought they were going to really warm to it, it's like their eyes glazed over. It's almost like the, the color came out of their face. And it clearly wasn't resonating. And it dawned on me that it had a meaning of resignation. You know, I have, I have to accept that this is just the way I am. So I struggled to find a different word or phrase. And what came through is green lighting out of the movie industry, where at a certain point, a project gets green lit that basically consists of an idea, a script, maybe one or two people are on the program, but then great changes are made possible by that green lighting. And that's how green lighting works in our work. Uh, it's a way, a deep way of being with, uh, letting be, uh, some of the language of, of Rick's and, and neurodharma that I've been reading. Um, so I think the best way to get into that in a little more concrete detail is for Linda to uh, lead us into, to some degree, um, or at least describe uh, a process that she came up with early in our work that to me is one of the greatest contributions uh, anybody's ever made to our particular approach. Thank you, Samuel. One thing I want to say about the term green lighting is that it is a deep, heartful, compassionate form of going in with oneself and seeing some of the patterns and conditioning and allowing yourself to actually be some of that, to green light it, to not beat yourself up. And so in that sense, there is a deep compassion and empathy for self, but there also is a deep compassion and empathy for others. So we talk about mutuality a lot in our work, waking down in mutuality, which was a phrase that came in early on in Samuel's founding position of that. And then, of course, the mutuality is when you can be with others and really listen deeply and give them that heartful compassion and green light all aspects of who they are here. Sanya was alluding to a practice that I actually, it, it, it reve was revealed to me many, many years ago when I was going through something particularly difficult. We call it six step recognition yoga. And this particular practice actually works for difficult issues that you might be dealing with at any given point, or it can actually help you bolster what we call your joy, maximizing joy in your relationships, in your work, in the world. And the six steps are see it, feel it, live it, be it, transcend it, and speak it. So I will explain a little bit about those steps <laughs> and actually just briefly how that was revealed to me during the time when I was dealing with this difficult situation with someone. I was taking a rest one afternoon years ago and as I was waking up from this nap, I was ruminating prior to sleeping around the situation that was so difficult and had been going on for a while. 
all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, like billboards in my mind's eye, there was those six or five words actually initially, see it, feel it, live it, be it, transcend it. And I literally bolted up in bed and went, that's it. Something shifted, something kind of landed more um, grounded, if you will, more green lighting myself in the midst of the difficulty. And over the years, we have developed different ways to help people through guided meditations or perhaps just spontaneously considering these steps with any particular thing that might be arising. I was so excited about the five things that came through for me that day. I ran into the kitchen, Samuel was sitting at the table, and I said, babe, I just had this amazing experience that just completely shifted <laughs> how my attitude and how I have been dealing with this particular issue. And his jaw dropped. He said, that's brilliant, you know, and may I add a sixth step, speak it. So uh, that also went along with the living it and being it. The living it would be animating it. So I'll go through the six steps. Let me just, just oh, uh, sure. <laughs> interpret a little bit here. Uh, yeah, I, my suggestion was speak it at appropriate moments along the way yeah. um, or share with others in whatever manner. It doesn't literally have to be the voice. But to me, uh, you know, one of the differences between us, uh, if, if you get to know us, uh, I spent a lot of time um, studying all these different traditions and the quest for enlightenment. And, you know, I can quote chapter and verse of certain <laughs> ancient scriptures and so on. Uh, and Linda's journey was, you know, not in that direction. Uh, so when she told me this, and, you know, and I had been living along these lines for, at that point, some years uh, in this particular awakened way. And she was at that point, by the way, this was after she had become her own awakened teaching. Uh, I cracked up because it was so essential. I mean, there's hardly even a long word in the whole batch. Transcend, that's the only one. She's got a few beautiful things on that. Anyway, I just wanted to... To say I was blown away by the simplicity and, and essentialness of this wisdom. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it was a gift, and it really did transform in a moment, really, how I was feeling and what, how I was also dealing with this particular issue. So what developed from that was a process that, I could actually help people and we could help people and our other teachers at the time could help people walk through to land more fully in that compassionate place of self and to be able to just green light the places in your being that are struggling perhaps. So I'm going to go through the steps real quick and um, describe pretty much what it means. and then just let you know about how to work the process if you want to work it. See it is basically just identifying what the issue is. And once again, it can be a difficult issue or it could be something that you're really so happy about that you want to make it stronger in your life. You want it to, becoming, to become more of in the foreground and so you can give your gifts to others perhaps. So you identify it, see it, you feel it. You allow yourself to not just feel it in an emotional way, um, that definitely, but feel it completely in your total identity, in your body. As you contemplate the issue, allow yourself to just sit and take a breath and feel what the issue is communicating to you and how it impacts the body, how it might actually trigger some tensions or you know, concerns perhaps. So feeling it is a whole being feeling it. As you drop into the feeling it, then consider the living it and the being it. And this is a little confusing sometimes for people because 
they say, well, if I live it, you know, and, and be it, is, aren't I just solely identifying with it? No, not exactly. And I'll get to that in a minute. The living it is being able to, a couple of examples. If you're frustrated, you know, beat a pillow, go scream in your car. <laughs> you know, these are animated expressions of your, your being, you know, not just your ego and personality, yes, that, but it's animating what it is that you need to get out. And it can be by yourself, it can be in a group, it can be directly with the person, perhaps if you have an issue with. So living it is animating it, the communicating it, being able to speak it, and, you know, pretty much transform the effect of it. So as you do that, as you're really embodying this entire process, there is a level of becoming it that is not, once again, it's not being solely identified with it. It is a whole being relaxation into it because you're not judging it any longer in the same way that you had perhaps an attitude. And then the transformation or the transcending it is pretty much transcending the effects of the issue, uh, transcending it in place. In other words, it doesn't just go away. The issue might still be there on occasion, but you have a different relationship to it, profoundly so. And as you're going through these, these steps and considering all these things, speaking it all along the way with trusted others, perhaps, with your beloveds. And this also generates more of a transitional space in your being to be able to have that compassionate empathy for yourself and to green light all parts. So that's the six step recognition yoga that I wanted to share with everyone. And once again, we have guided meditations on our website. We have several different offerings samuelandlinda.com that's our website um we have other guided meditations there as well but um yeah this is a practice that we thought might be helpful for you all yeah and i see that um <clears throat> a couple of you uh including kathleen and one of the other oh donna uh, y'all managed to catch it and uh compress these into the chat here see it feel it live it be it transcend it, speak it. And, and the speaking, by the way, not necessarily all along the way, but at whatever appropriate moment. And, uh, you know, a couple of things I want to add to that, and then I want to shift over to a, a complementary process that uh, activates the other side of our nature, our capacity, something like the energy it takes, as the Dalai Lama was saying, to uh, cultivate mental immunity. Um, in this process, more and more, uh, you can discover that you are, in effect, uh, strengthening yourself in your green zone and building, uh, as we suggested in our subtitle, building a deeper and wider uh, green zone for your process. And this can be, six-step recognition yoga can be undertaken by anybody, regardless of what particular tradition of practice or school uh, of approach they may be in, as long as it's, you know, it's felt to be relatively congenial with the approach they're already embodying. And I have to say, as I've gotten to know Rick's work more and more, I'm, by no means, you know, a learned scholar, uh, but I feel such a strong resonance of that orientation of great compassion to all of our yes. parts. Yes. And what happens in this, you know, if we can say that this is more like the, uh, the Archbishop's, Archbishop Tutu's self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, maybe even giving yourself a break, letting yourself be, um, then there's another piece that comes in that is kind of, it's very timely, very related to six-step recognition yoga. And that is, 
let's say there's a particular frustration that you've been working with for quite some time. You've gotten a lot more insight into its roots in yourself. Uh, by the way, uh, parenthesis here, an important piece of this that uh, neuropsychology has helped us understand uh, much more over the last few decades, as I know Rick would, would agree, um, one thing we want to be careful about is re-traumatizing. So, <laughs> you know, this, it's not merely about whatever negative comes up, just go wallow in it. That's mm -hmm. not it any more than it's about you know, uh, merely pampering or being self-indulgent to yourself. But the, 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 the flip side of the coin comes in when, say, you have had opportunity to go through this practice quite a bit, it becomes, by the way, almost instinctual and immediate. Yes. It's like it, it compresses down from steps to simply here it is, I'm in it, yeah. and, you know, you, you get to a clarity. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that because yeah. just recently I was working with a woman who is relatively new to working with Samuel and I, and in the session, she was dealing with, you know, an issue. And she had been reading Samuel's books and, you know, looking at our website and doing a lot of work on her own and taking some of our courses. And she said, you know, I just had this interesting experience the other day where da 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 da. She literally, without knowing six step recognition yoga, spoke it so beautifully and it happened in an instant mm -hmm. for her. And she felt completely different about this particular issue. So that is one of the ways that it can show up. You know, it can be so spontaneous and in a moment. So you don't necessarily have to do a practice around it, but that helps too sometimes. And for really gnarly stuff in us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first time you practice this, it may not go into a deep quality of transcendence. But more and more, particularly as you've worked with something over a period of time, there's a likelihood of getting to a place, and I, I have a hunch many of you have had these kind of moments, where something comes up, you know, whatever your custom practice is with it, you go into that, but there's this feeling of been there, done that. You know, why should I bother even giving this any attention anymore. I'm over this frustration. I don't believe this doubt when it comes up. You know, I regulate my anger. Uh, and, you know, it's natural to me. And so that led to what we call, again, a complementary practice. We call it the four R's. So the first two R's are recognition, which that six-step recognition yoga activates and release. So in other words, in that transcendence in place, and I don't know if you used your image, Linda talks about how it's like you have, there's a chokehold on you. And you, you know, when you're in your stuff, you can barely breathe. Yeah. And somehow, even almost imperceptibly, but you feel it, the chokehold releases. You, you're still there. It may still be on your mindscape. So after you go through these things enough, at a certain point, you get, I don't want to bother with that. I don't want to spend time on it. And what happens is the next of the four R's comes into play, which is reconfiguration. And at that point, essentially, it's deciding, I'm done. I'm not going to go there anymore. I mean, I won't tell the whole story, but for me, uh, Self-doubt was major, and shortly after my awakening, it was it kept coming up. And for quite a while, I had to go back in there, and I didn't have Linda's lovely little sorry sheet there of <laughs> da 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 da. But that's what was ha happening. And at a certain point, a friend to, said to me, "You know, I wish you could burn the bridge back to that playground of doubt, because every time you go there, she was one of my early clients." She said, I get set adrift. And, you know, the force of intention came through vigorously. I said, I'm done. I'm not only burning the playground, I'm burning the bridge. And I never believed it again. Didn't mean that little tremors of doubt didn't come up. Well, what I did was 
you know, as people teach, it's well known, you know, what it takes to set an intention and groove some uh, new neural patterns, new channels in your being so that more and more you don't have to think about it. I'm going to do different. You're already doing it. Looks like we have some chats that's popped in here. So let's uh, check yes. it out. Yes, so quick. four hours, a recognition release, reconfiguration. Let me finish the last yeah. one. Do that reconfiguration enough. It may not be within 21 or 30 days, like you know they say it takes to set a new habit. But sooner or later, it's as if you've been regenerated in relation to that whole is, well, both negative issues, also positive ones, yes. like, whoa, I'm coming into a greatness in my being here. Yes. It's kind of hard for me to own. We talk a lot it, about confidence, yeah. confidence of being. Yeah. So Donna asks, could journaling be part of the process? Absolutely. Yes. A great way to do it for any of those steps, including, by the way, journaling and make it, sending your journal entry to someone else. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, such as experiences of trauma that one has been working on healing. Yeah, and we are deep respecters of all the great ways that people have <clears throat> clarified yeah. uh, to work with the really gnarly stuff in ourselves that it's important to be gentle with. Yes, and to um, find good therapy if need be. Uh, we don't have time at the moment to go through another actual situation other than what Linda was describing. Um, earlier, Art asked if you would choose an issue and go through the process. <sighs> well, you know, let, let's finish our presentation time here and then we can come back to that. Let's not say no. We will do that. Uh, you know, we'll break shortly for uh, Q&A and we're already kind of getting there. Let me just add one other piece here. Um, again, anybody can do this, whatever your basic practices and your philosophy, your beliefs, provided it's sufficiently congruent, that it appeals to you. Uh, in our work, that, remember Linda said uh, a phrase back there, the sun in your heart is rising. And if you could imagine heart spelled with a big capital H and then smaller capitals, E-A-R-T. That means that this sun-like radiance of your own unconditioned identity, your divine identity, your, if you want to use more traditional language and it's congruent for you, I don't mean to appropriate Buddha nature, Christ consciousness, however you relate to that deeper dimension of all existence that's also fundamental to your own sense of identity and being. And so our work, and for instance, the, the gazing process, but also when we're not being silent, there's a transmission that goes on. And Linda likes to say, everybody is always transmitting their state to others and receiving everyone else's back. We are that kind of a, an event in nature, all of us, interconnected, as Thich Nhat Hanh said, interbeing as well. And so this transmission process is a, an enormous part of our work, along with heart exploration and heart evocation that we do where we're speaking to that greater part of your nature and welcoming you to bring it into being. Yes, green lighting it. Green again. lighting it, yes. And sometimes... <laughs> and it, well, that maximizes the joy. To go <laughs> yes. back to the title, you. you know, all of this Thank maximizes you. joy yeah. in your totality identity, yeah. in your heart of hearts. And then you take that joy and those transitions and you bring it out into the world to all of your beloveds and everyone who you encounter. And you transmit that wonderful, grounded, joyful mm -hmm. place in your being. So, so this, this process of a kind of activation goes on between and among us. We can say more about that, perhaps, if, if people want to hear more about it. Uh, but part of what's exciting to me, having been doing this for over 30 years, and, you know, somehow, undeservable grace, I call it, you know, as soon as I started working with people, 
within weeks after my awakening had stabilized, uh, others began going through a similar kind of stabilization. Many of us having sought it for years and decades, given up hope, and so on. And since that time, many, many hundreds of people have gone through this kind of transition uh, and then go on to live on that basis freely in their own ways, sometimes staying close by, friends with us, others moved on and so on. But what we're seeing more and more now is that this democratizing, this viraling out, it's, it's almost rhizomatic. And it's not necessarily requiring someone to be a teacher or a coach and help someone through it, though often it's helpful to have input from someone who's deeper down the line of it all in their way. But we're very excited about the next phases of all this uh, and look forward to helping others uh, move into the same thing. Absolutely. So, very much looking forward to serving as many people as we can so that each individual can find their heart's gifts and their heart's truth and their grounded, embodied awakening here in life, in relationship, in all parts of who you are and connectedness to others. Ha! Huh. Okay. <laughs> as I said earlier, there's so much more to our team. Uh-oh. All right, can you hear them? Oh, my God. What's that? I can hear you. Yeah. We lost sound there for a second. Oh, are you hearing us? Yeah, it was just for a, a very, very brief second. Oh. You're, you're good now. You're good. <laughs> I was I got worried. Somehow I, I clipped on it there when I was banging around the room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lost so, no, just, just, can I ask you one thing just from the chat? Before you go on to the next piece, would you just give a little bit more definition of, of regeneration? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have biologist friends who uh, kind of tap me on that. <laughs> it's not a technical biological definition process, but it's, it's this sense of no longer having to exercise yourself to, to do a particular work in order to be able to enjoy what that work was putting in place earlier. So instead of continuing to work to reconfigure an old habit that really is now obsolete, you find basically it's gone. And instead, you know, I use the example of doubt for myself. Instead, this uh, increasing confidence you know, in living this way uh, became second nature to me. I stopped thinking about it, wondering, worrying, whatever it is, whether anybody else would call it that, because as a mentor of mine said, spirituality is not just evolutionary, it is itself evolving. So our approach is somewhat different, but you become that confident. Does Thank that you, answer Kathleen. your question, Kathleen? Uh, yes, yes, I think so. And so I think you can go on however you like. There were just a couple of comments in the chat that they wanted, that people oh, wanted. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, Linda Robinson asked, um, can someone explain the difference between be it and live it? Hmm. Um, I hear, she said, I hear them as the same thing. They're very closely related. As you as you drop into, you see it, you feel it fully, you live it, and that animates it into more of your totality identity. Um, and you feel like you literally become it, you know, the issue. And that could be, once again, a really positive encounter with something that you want to build upon. So the being it, the living and being really goes hand in hand so closely together. And the being it enables you to be able to see it from a different perspective completely. And that's where the transcending it in place comes in. I so, hope that, that helped. Yes, is that, was that helpful? Um, I see Wilfried asks, what is it? 
So the it there is whatever issue, mm -hmm. um, and it may be something that's positive that's hard for you to own somehow, mm -hmm. or it may be something difficult and dark and negative, but the it is whatever that the issue, issue may be that you're looking to uh, come into this uh, paradoxical mm -hmm. and very wakeful relationship to. Yeah, and in the positive side of that, the, it could be, let's say, mm, I want to access more of my creativity. I feel my creativity coming online, but it's not quite there yet. So you can use the mm -hmm. process to bolster that. And the transcendent in, in place part of that would be, be being able to put attention on perhaps some of the things that's stopping you or it could be cutting edges or disbeliefs about your creativity broken zones as we call them um which are kind of like wounds in relationship that can come up when you're encountering certain things so that transcending you're transcending those kinds of things and then you realize you can take a deeper breath and be more creative and bring that into the I know uh, Tara has her hand raised, uh, oh, and a number of people have also asked for a, um, an example. I know you've given pieces of examples, so I'll leave it up to you whether you want to. Um, have okay. We will do that. First, Thank let's you. hear from Farah. Okay. Right, I've just asked you to unmute. There you go. Thank you so much for uh, taking my question. Uh, I have been trying to uh, practice that joy and I uh, completely understand the importance of it uh, logically. And uh, I'm so also great to bring a joy for others. But practicing joy within myself, uh, I feel a lot of guilt and shame for whatever you know past trauma happened that I don't, I see a lot of resistance that uh, it prevents me to experience joy from inside, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. and so within that six layers of the practice, uh, can you guide me? How, what should I have to do with myself in order to be able to be more open to that concept? Because logically I understand, but mm -hmm. deep inside is very different. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Well, the process sometimes can be, as I mentioned before, really spontaneous and happen in a moment. And even if in that moment you feel less of what, you know, this image of the chokehold of the, of the issue lightens, you can build on that through considering placing attention on some of the patterned thinking perhaps that you've had around the issue. And accessing joy, as we opened up with, you know, these this day and age, there's a lot of difficult stuff happening in the world and to access joy within yourself sometimes can be very difficult. However, it's not impossible. And by being able to I would say, to use our term again, green light the fact that you feel like you're, you might not be capable, perhaps, of getting it. Releasing that kind of judgment about yourself might actually open up a space where you can live it and be it a little bit more. You can feel it more deeply. So, so much of the time we, we tend to judge ourselves. We think, oh, I'm not being a good practitioner if I'm not doing it this way. And we really encourage people to take a breath even there. You know, that's a, a normal, common experience and attitude that a lot of people have. But if you can actually allow yourself to drop into that, take a breath, you know, befriend it, have voice dialogue with it, perhaps, that can lighten up the load of the judgments maybe that might be happening in your process. And you'll so start- So what I did is I did a lot of uh, work on myself and I know that the core belief 
Because until everybody else will be happy, I cannot experience happy. It seems that this, uh, my core uh, commitment to help others, I'm a social worker, and also be able to, uh, you know, uh, bring that joy to others or helping others, moving others. And I think this become is kind of core of my uh, being, which it's so much tied to the trauma that I had in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know how I can switch that core belief. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is my kind of, and I've practiced that uh, many, many ways, but I could not switch. Well, um, we would, one thing we would invite you to do is, uh, you know, let's, let's be in contact and see if we might be able to be of help. Because mm. uh, there's, there's, a, there's a reframing of core beliefs that yes. goes on in this process. Yes. That, that is another aspect of green lighting. Yes. And uh, it's, it, it, it helps you know, when we talk about evoking you, you know, part of how I'm hearing this is that you are so sensitive to what it takes to bring joy into the world. And you expose yourself in your daily work to a lot of anything but joy. So there's, a, you know, many different shapes and forms mm -hmm. of, in effect, going through this process and getting to reconfigure your relationship, among other things, to those core beliefs. Mm -hmm. So how can I get in touch with you guys through your website? Yes. SanielandLinda.com. That's S-A-N-I-E-L-A-N-D, Linda.com. That is our website, and yeah. that's a great way to connect in some ways. Yeah, we're, not, we're, not, we're not here Thank to you so talk much. about our work, but you know, <laughs> this is a heartfelt No, no, I totally appreciate that. Yes. If somebody would be able to switch that, mm. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We've worked with a lot of people yes. with issues like that, myself included. <laughs> so okay. I really appreciate you bringing that in. I'm like, yeah, I can recognize that. So, And by the way, I really enjoy my work. Mm. When I work and when I uplift the people, I really enjoy that. But bringing inner joy is a whole different ballgame. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. There's so thank many you. wonderful questions here, and we're not going to have time to do them justice. Uh, so, um, Art was asking about um, a, a, an example of the, the six-step recognition yoga. And yes, we actually brought in a couple of examples. My personal example, um, how it was revealed to me, having this issue with an individual that I was not getting along with. And it was an ongoing problem for quite some time and there was no resolution. So that was the issue itself. But as the, these steps came in so fully and so spontaneously in a moment, it, uh, you know, literally I sat up and I felt different. I felt like something was transformed in my attitude and my experience of, of dealing with this individual. And I also was able to embrace this person from a deeper place in my being and not ruminate over, you know, oh, this person's not showing up and we're not getting anywhere, blah, blah, blah. Something really transformed with that too. And I felt more of a compassion for her. So I hope that that helped a little bit more art. Uh, Linda, I wonder if, well, there may not be time, but Cynthia has asked um, about an issue such as deep shame. Yes. So the question yes. is, you're saying live the shame and lean into it, feeling unlovable. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. And, yeah. and, and, and thank you, Cynthia, for asking yes, that. Thank and, you. you know, you mentioned a sense of unworthiness, undeservingness. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to be able to give yourself permission to live it, to really feel into it. So a good example of living it might be, let's say you have some of these feelings. You might curl up on the ground in the fetal position mm. and just hang out there with it and not try to fix it. Mm. Uh, to give yourself that feeling of being that, the mystery yeah. here is that your divine nature, your greater identity, your 
we call it totality identity with everyone and everything. What we see is that that's coming alive and awake in and as and through everybody, everybody and all of us together. It's, it's almost a reverse interpretation of spirituality where it's not about all these little pocket egos trying to get to the great divine, but excuse me. <laughs> Uh, as Carl Jung actually suggested, maybe the meaning of human history is actually the other direction, that the mm -hmm. godness is becoming us. Yes. And all of these symptoms we're going through are kind of like the heat shield burning off as we land here with our full divinely human nature, which is another phrase we use. So, you know, giving yourself permission to dare to go a little deeper into feeling yeah. and being these things is good. Go ahead. Well, this, the, the aspect of unworthiness goes right back to the example I gave a little earlier of working with a woman just recently who did the six step recognition yoga in a minute. And she said that the unworthiness always showed up for her as like a black ball. And she, anytime she felt that black ball, she would dissociate from it, she'd run from it, and it would just come back around. And this time, what happened was she said, I am going in there. So that's the living and being it. She, she grabbed that black ball in her mind's eye, and then it transformed. So that's another example to bring that in. So we're, we're over our time here, uh, Kathleen, I'm seeing, and... Um, uh, darn. Yeah, darn. Uh, you know, I think what, I, go on and on. what we'd like to do, um, I don't know if guest teachers, if there's a way to set up some kind of other event or something like that, I'll leave it to you and the other stewards and Rick to let us know, but we'd certainly be happy to go deeper with people and, and so get into so. more of this yes. uh, on another occasion and not by way of trying to twist your arm into you know, do, doing something other than the work you're already doing, but just so you can get more of a feeling for what we mean. Because it's very moving that so many of you uh, really responded with, with such great questions and yes. desire for thank more. you all so much. And once again, our website is SanyaLandLinda.com. If you wanted to write to us directly, it's info at SanyaLandLinda.com. And we would love to hear from you. And it's just such a great pleasure to be with all of you. And thank you, Kathleen and Art and Rick and all of the stewards who make this happen. And Samuel and I want to just send major, huge, loving, heartful blessings out to each and every one of you here tonight with us and the in the future for the ones who are previewing this this talk and this meditation thank you all so so much much love